You guys, I am so pissed, okay? Sending billions of dollars to Ukraine obviously wasn't enough. That they're trying to send 300 million more dollars to Ukraine. Our money. Our taxes. The taxes that come out of our money. Like, in what world are we living in? Like, this is insane. Meanwhile, our freaking, our borders are being invaded by a whole bunch of people that we have no clue who the fuck they are. And they worried about Ukraine? Man, listen. Y'all gotta watch Marjorie Green. Listen to what she says. Okay, I've hit it. Uh, good morning, everybody. Wanted to come on and talk to you about what's happening and why I'm not in Washington today, why most members of Congress left town yesterday, and uh, why we're not doing anything for the American people. So September 30th, I'm sure you've seen all over the news, September 30th is the funding deadline that Congress has to finish all of our appropriation bills, finish our budget, and fund the government. And um, we aren't getting that done. And it's very frustrating to all of us, every single one of us, that we're not getting that done. But I'm particularly frustrated today uh, we went home for August recess. We should have stayed in Washington working to get our appropriation bills done, but we didn't. We went on August recess, and that's when we're supposed to go back to our districts and get work done in our districts. That's what we did. But we should have stayed in Washington and funded the government and gotten all the work done, hammering out the details. But we have 12 separate appropriation bills. We only had one pass before we went home in August. Now we have 11 left. Well, yesterday, in case you didn't see the news or don't know what happened, while President Zelensky from Ukraine was in Washington begging for more American people's taxpayer dollars, while our border is being invaded at record levels, and while the Biden administration has welcomed everyone to America illegally, we did not, we were not able to get our bills done. So yesterday they decided to bring the defense bill to the floor. And I want to be very clear with all of you, all week long, as a matter of fact, all year long, I have told every single one of my colleagues, I have told the press, I have told my district, I've posted on social media a thousand times, I am not voting for one single penny to go to a war in Ukraine. I am, I'm America first. I work for the United States of America. I work for the American people. Our border is being overrun and we have a president in the United States and an administration that is happy and fine with open borders and is bringing in more illegal aliens into America than we can possibly handle. New York is being crushed. Texas has been crushed for a long time. California, Arizona, Georgia, Alaska, you name it, all over the country, these illegal aliens are coming into our country. So they bring a defense bill to the floor yesterday that had $300 million for Ukraine in it. I told them all week long, I'm not voting for $300 million for Ukraine. Take the money out, put it in a separate bill if you want to, and then I can vote no, other members can vote no, and if you people want to vote to send more money, more American tax dollars to a war in Ukraine, then you vote yes for it. But I'm not doing it. And they didn't listen. They didn't respect me. They didn't respect other members that were saying the same thing. So they brought the defense bill, the defense appropriation bill, which by the way, is largely a very good bill. A bill that I want to vote for without the Ukraine money. I would love to vote for that bill without the Ukraine money. But no, they didn't take it out. So they brought it to the floor for a vote and I voted no to the rule. I voted no to the rule. And so guess what? It didn't pass, the rule did not pass and the bill couldn't be brought to the floor. So we couldn't even pass the appropriations bill. And then they called me and said, Marjorie, will you vote for it if we take it out? I said, that's what I have been saying all week long. All week long, I have been saying, take it out and I will vote for it. Take the money out and I will vote for it. But they didn't respect me and they didn't respect other people. So they didn't respect the American people. And they still brought it to the rule to the floor 
<clears throat> Anyways, <clears throat> so here we are. So I'm at home. Other members of Congress are at home. Some are in Washington. And we're, again, not getting anything done. And we have the September 30th funding deadline coming up. Now, here's, here's my issue. This is what I don't understand. Just because there are members in our conference that are in red districts and they really want to send money to Ukraine, but they don't want their districts to know that they voted to send money to Ukraine or they don't want to get beat up about it, doesn't mean that I have to commit the sin with them. You see, I don't have to vote yes and cover up the garbage, the America last garbage that they want to do just to help them get by with it. And that's where I'm really angry this morning. So I don't really care what anyone has to say at this point. You sent me home yesterday. You disrespected my views. You disrespected America's views. You disrespected everybody that is sick and damn tired of funding foreign wars while our border is being invaded. Guess what? There's some, there's some uh, news this morning. Here's how bad it is. Not only are thousands and thousands of people flooding in to Eagle Pass, Texas, the Biden, the Biden DHS, this is news out, I just read this, they, they let 200,000 illegal immigrants, they didn't let them in the country by, by, by a train, like you saw the videos of the trains coming through Mexico. No, that wasn't it. They didn't come up through buses that the cartels own coming to our border and then running across the border. No, 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 no. 200,000 flew into our country. They came by plane. They bought a plane ticket from their home country and they flew into 43 cities. And guess what? Here's, here's the kicker. You're not going to believe this. It, it happened on an app that the Biden administration has. They were able to come in our country illegally by registering on a Biden administration app. That's how they did it. This is how damn bad it is. We have people coming in, planes, trains, automobiles, and boats, illegally invading America. And we have members of Congress that are so dead set on a war in Ukraine, which doesn't even border our country, which is across the Atlantic Ocean, is over in Europe, that they refuse to take $300 million out of our defense bill. No, 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 we can't address the border situation. So yesterday we have Zelensky in the Capitol, standing in the Capitol in Washington, D.C. And they had to bring that bill to the floor with $300 million in it. And they wanted me to vote for it. Hell no. And I'm glad I'm back home because I don't really want to talk to anybody right now. This is pathetic. This is the most America last pathetic thing I've ever seen. And I'm furious about it. I'm so mad about it. I'm standing here going live on Twitter telling the world. I hope everyone knows how sick and damn tired I am of it. I have helped. I have donated. I have fought for Republic, the Republican agenda. I have stood by everyone. But when it comes to this, I've told them all year long, I'm not voting for your stupid war with Russia. There should be a peace treaty in that country right now. I'm not voting to murder more people in the, one of the most corrupt countries on earth. Put America first. Our country is being invaded, invaded. We can't even impeach Mayorkas. Can you believe that? We can't even impeach Mayorkas. We should be impeaching Mayorkas. We should be impeaching Biden over the border. Can't even do that. But we have members of Congress, Republicans, that with very red districts, very red districts, that are so dead set on they got to send money to Ukraine, they don't want it taken out of the defense bill. That's where it sits. Everybody's going to be mad at me for saying all of this out loud to the public, but I really do not care. Let me explain why. I got elected from this district, the one I'm standing in right now in Georgia, Georgia's 14th district. And when I walk out of my house and I go any, anywhere I go in my district, you know what they say to me? Thank you, Marjorie, thank you. You know what else happens? 
elsewhere in the country, they say, thank you, Marjorie. Americans are sick and tired of the America last Washington, D.C. federal government machine that serves the rest of the world and tells Americans to go F themselves. And then they tell Americans to pay for it. Enough of this garbage. It needs to end right now. Here, I'll give you another little story. Yesterday, when I was getting on the airplane in Washington, getting on my flight and I sat down in my seat, another member of Congress came up to me and was mad at me for voting no against the rule on the defense bill. So I very loudly told him in front of everyone on the plane, if you wanna vote for it, put it in a separate bill. You vote for the money to Ukraine. I'm not voting for it. Absolutely not voting for it. I don't care what it's in. I'm not voting for it. Not voting for it. And when he went by, guess what? Everyone around me said, thank you. I support you. Thank you. And then a couple of people got up and took pictures with me. So for those of you in Washington that are so thick-headed and so America last that you think that we have to give in and vote for crap in these big bills. Oh, because the September 30th deadline is coming. I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't give a damn. We should have been in Washington getting our work done weeks ago. We should be in Washington right now getting our work done. And you wanna know something else? You should respect members of Congress like me because we're working for the American people. And when we say, we are not voting for money to Ukraine, and we don't care if Zelensky's standing in the Capitol in his stupid green jumpsuit and he can't wear a suit and tie as he comes and begs for money from us, then you don't respect the American people. I have absolutely had enough. Absolutely had enough. I shouldn't have to do this video. I shouldn't have had to vote no yesterday. I told all of you, the entire week. I told you in conference, I told the press, I told you to your face in meetings, I posted it on social media. I told you nonstop, I'm not voting for this. Secondly, we have a weaponized government, a weaponized government. The Department of Justice is, is using its power to politically persecute its political enemies. And I'm not voting for that either. I am not voting for that. So if you want my yes vote, I've told you the entire time, not voting for the weaponized government. I am not voting for COVID garbage of any kind, mask, vaccines, new vaccines, any of it. And I am not voting for a war in Ukraine in any bill of any kind. I don't care how great the bill is. I am not voting for it. If you people want to fund the war in Ukraine, do it on your own. Don't ask me to help out. It's so crazy. Like, I just want to shout out Marjorie Green for keeping it real and being honest with the American people. We need more people like her in the White House, and that's facts. Mayhem across America, an influx of migrants rushing across the southern border. Sanctuary cities overwhelmed by the crisis. With the president missing, how can the US get on top of the surge? And what happens next? Sky News Digital Originals presents Migrant Mayhem, Biden's border disaster. New York City is just one major city buckling under an influx of migrants arriving. As the migrants come in, many of them are processed and some even end up staying here at the Roosevelt Hotel. And that has made this spot a focal point as the migrant crisis continues. I want to have my photographer show you all. We have seen migrants line this city street, sometimes wrapping all the way around the entire block, waiting for processing inside. And during the nighttime hours, we've also seen migrants sleeping here on the city streets when there's no space inside. And New Yorkers are not happy. What message are you sending to the world? Break the law, come, we give you everything free. Joe Biden, do you think that's going to stop? You don't know who's coming into these places. Molesters, murderers, they just let them in, okay? Meanwhile, an American that's sitting on the street doesn't have a dollar for a piece of bread? Whose fault is this? 
We have polling that indicates that there is a, a broad and diverse uh, group of New Yorkers, the overwhelming majority, who think this is an absolute problem for our city. Uh, it was two thirds in a recent poll. It was 80 percent in the first poll. Uh, they're not hearing that from elected leaders like uh, Mayor Adams uh, and, and Dan Goldman uh, and Yvette Clark and some of the members of the House Homeland Security Committee. These are people who are pro-sanctuary cities and are trying to paint a rosy picture of what's going on. Protesters greeting Democratic lawmakers as they tour a migrant processing centre. A concern echoed across the nation as fears mount about those who could be entering the United States. New York's Nassau County Police Commissioner sharing this chilling warning. There's no controlled access at the border, so we don't know who's coming through that border. That makes my job and the Commissioner's job harder. I have to vet the normal domestic terrorist people that are evolving in this country. Now I got to take everything from around the world that's coming through the border with no vetting process and now try to figure out who's going to be my next potential target. How many hundreds have gotten through that border already that are building up right now to do an attack on our country? We don't know it. A shocking new statistic from US Border Patrol with 146 suspected terrorists or people on the terror watch list stopped at the border this year alone. Before President Biden took office, that number was zero. These people are not being properly vetted, particularly the ones that are being dropped off in the streets. I mean, you can just imagine that the, the, the people you know that are trying to do their job at the Department of Homeland Security are overwhelmed. And so I think it's much easier, perhaps, for someone to slip through the cracks, particularly when they're overwhelmed. If they can only handle so many, they should only process so many uh, people through. This is what happens when you open the border like this and you have the mass waves of people coming and the cartels are able to exploit it. And that that's this is there's going to be more of this. The numbers go down when the when the summer gets really hot, but uh, the numbers are back up and they're coming in the United States. Former Border Patrol Chief Rodney Scott recently spoke at a Judiciary Committee on the threat of those coming over the border. What impact did the Biden policies have on the uh, security of our southern border? It reversed the entire like 29 years of my career. It reversed all the progress we made and completely decimated border security. Would you say that these changes are responsible for the crisis we now see at that border? 100 percent, because it's catch and release. Mr. Nadler assures us that, well, don't worry, everybody who comes across is subject to, in his words, rigorous vetting procedure. Would you uh, elucidate on that? Yeah, the information they give the officer, their name, their, and even their fingerprints are bounced off of a database here in the United States that has minuscule information about foreigners in it. So it's the equivalent of checking them in basically an empty hard drive. So you're, you, you'd once described it as, uh, as, as checking it against a blank sheet of paper. Correct. Because we don't have that information and then they're allowed in. It sounds really good. Uh, it's really doing nothing. It's the interviews where the agents and they look at their tattoos, they look at their face, they figure out are they telling you the truth. That's where you find things out and that is not taking place today because of the massive flow. And as the migrant crisis surges across the country, Donald Trump's border wall sits unfinished, with the Biden administration now selling off parts of his wall that haven't been used. You can't make it up. The Biden administration inherited around $260 million worth of border construction materials from the Trump administration. They immediately put it in storage on day one when Donald or when Joe Biden said he wasn't going to build the wall. They've now paid $300 million to store it for two years, more than the cost of the material themselves. But as soon as Senate Republicans, led by Senator Roger Wicker, who uh, is the leader of Republicans on the Armed Services Committee, began poking around and asking questions about it earlier this year, the administration began to sell these materials for less than two cents on the dollar. The legislation that you mentioned is Senator Wicker's legislation, which I was pleased to join. It was added unanimously by Democrats on the Armed Services Committee to our annual defense bill. And now the administration is racing to try to sell off all of these materials because they would rather have taxpayers take a massive loss of hundreds of millions of dollars than give them to the governor of Texas for instance, to build the border wall or to allow them to be sitting around and used to build a border wall when Republicans take back the White House in January of 2025. Those arriving into border states are being moved around the country to self-declared sanctuary cities. Texas has bussed over 35,000 migrants out of the state and into different parts of the country. Meanwhile, in California, San Diego is experiencing an influx of migrants being dumped on the streets. 
in the last five days, about 2,700 uh, migrants have been dropped at transit or transportation system uh, stations uh, in uh, San Diego County. And what's happened is the the uh, the immigration uh, system here does have facilities to process people who, who are seeking asylum, uh, but the, they're they're full, they're at capacity, and so they they don't have the facilities or the or the uh, personnel to handle all of these people, and so what they're doing is dropping them off at transit centers uh, throughout the county. And unfortunately, these people are, are bewildered. They don't know where they are. They don't know how to get to where they're going. They don't know how to use our transportation system. Many of them can't speak English. And so it's unfortunate, I think, for both the, the residents and the neighbors nearby uh, these neighborhoods that of these transit stations and the people themselves, uh, the asylum seekers or migrants that are being just dropped off and not having a clue what to do next. I am so furious, so furious. But let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below.